Uh, we have most of the time uh, in the breakout room where we play the game and in each room there will be a facilitator helping you out. Um, so uh, we'll put guards on the board, uh, have a discussion on characteristics of organizations and before we get back into the central room at the end, uh, we also look at uh, the experiences we would uh, like to share in the central room again uh, and then uh, look at the next steps. Um, so that's the agenda and uh, maybe you can go to the next slide, uh, Jan Sake. And uh, as Katie already mentioned, it was really nice uh, because this is a co-creation of, uh, of both consortia, Agile Consortium Netherlands and Agile Business Consortium. Uh, and that's, I'm, I'm the chair of the Agile Business Consortium, but hey, you can read more about me in the, on the website and LinkedIn, so I won't bother you with, uh, with that. Uh, but being chair of the Agile Consortium is an interesting thing uh, because I like to connect communities. Um, and connecting communities is what we do in the way of uh, events, uh, sharing events. Uh, and uh, COVID is, 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 is a bad thing happening to the world, but uh, collaborating on events and bringing people together uh, like this is something that's taking a boost. Uh, so uh, that's one of the things we do, but also work groups. And that's where this game came from, uh, the leadership game. It was being developed by a work group on leadership in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, and they, uh, what we usually do is uh, get interested people, bring them together and give them a target, like a conference where they are going to present. And in that way, this night game, and it was a board game, was created. Uh, and Jan Sake was one of the, the gurus that, uh, that was there uh, from the start. Uh, and also the one uh, who took the most effort in bringing it forward to, uh, to next steps, which includes the version that we are using today. Uh, but now, and especially at the end of this session, I would also like to invite you, if you are interested in working together in the community, uh, making next steps, additions to this game, and we're thinking about creating an app, etc. Uh, but if you'd like to join, uh, then uh, please let us know. Our emails are in the slides at the end. Uh, so I uh, hope to welcome you also in, the, in this community that's, that's active uh, uh, in creating things that inspired others uh, and not only yourself. So that's, um, that's the thing. Um, yeah, I think that's good enough for, for this one. Maybe the next slide, yeah. I already mentioned bringing together the communities uh, and stimulating broader use. Uh, good to know that there's no commercial reason behind developing this game. Uh, we are purely creating this kind of stuff uh, to inspire ourselves and others. Um, and that's also why it's, uh, it's, it's free to use. I only mentioned that, it's, uh, that it started from the Edge Consortium to so have that link, a creative common space it's, it's in. Uh, and if you have additions, uh, bring them back to the community. Uh, so good to know that. And that's also a nice example of how we prepared for this session. Uh, we had a trainer trainer session with the facilitators. Those names are on the right. Not everybody could make it today, so we have a subset of them. Uh, but it's a nice example of having a two-hour session with this group, walk through how to do this game, and you can have train the trainers. And this is also what we will provide uh, after today through the consortia uh, with additional events. And if you wish something like this to be used in your community or within your organization, uh, then these are typically the ways where the consortia will uh, help and facilitate you in, in bringing this forward. So nice to have this group of people and uh, well, you meet uh, uh, one of them in the rooms in the, in the breakout. Um, that's about it, maybe to the facilitators or Jan Sake, did I forget to mention something? Or do you have additions? No, I think that's it. Yeah, then I hand it over to you, Jan Saker. You can lead us into the content. Okay, thank you, uh, Jeroen, and welcome all. Let's see if we can get the next slide. Yes. So today we will uh, take you on a trip to, uh, to your favorite island. My first thoughts were uh, that it would like, uh, look like something like this. But of course, that depends highly on uh, what your purpose and uh, your situation uh, is. Um, 
if you desperately need a relaxing holiday after months of lockdown, then this might be the right choice. But some of you might need some uh, more adventures, like uh, you know, for an adrenaline boost or something uh, like that, something more like uh, like this. And I need to click now, but it worked, yeah. So maybe you want to go to this island. Uh, of course, it all depends on the uh, uh, situation you are uh, in and what you what you want. Uh, maybe this might be a better destination. And all of this is also dependent on, uh, on what I said, the situation you're in. So um, yeah, do you have enough money for a trip like this? Or is there any regulation that stops you from traveling? Maybe yeah, that's also possible these days. Uh, but uh, I can say three things are important for your choice. Uh, where do you want to go? What do you want? And why do you want to go there? That's also important. And where are you now? Uh, what, is, what is your uh, starting point? And if we take this to the organization level, we talk about an organization change. We also need to find out the answers on these, uh, on these questions. So a lot of research has been done on organizations and how they are structured. What is the best way of working? What kind of leadership is needed? And this is not a lecture on organization development, but summarize, you can distinguish at least four organization, what we call archetypes. And um, oh, I'm sorry, oh, something has changed in the, you have another one, uh, I'm sorry. I changed something in the order and now I've uh, uh, used Jeroen's uh, presentation. So I have to switch a little bit uh, now, but that's not a problem. Um, three, of, uh, three of the uh, uh, organization archetypes uh, are shown in, uh, in this uh, game. And uh, they are represented by uh, uh, three islands you can see uh, over here. And they all have their own characteristics. Uh, the volcano island on the left is the, the red island. And in the game, red is the color of an ad hoc, what we call an ad hoc, ad hoc organization. And the rock in the middle is a blue island and blue represents a bureaucratic organization. So if you see blue in the game, you have to think of a bureaucratic organization. And on the right side, you see a green island and the green island represents a flexible organization. And each organization type has its own characteristics. So don't worry if you do not recognize all the differences. During the game, you will discover what they are. So playing the game will help you to look around in your own company to find out where you are now. Probably you will find out that there is a mixture of visible characteristics of all three islands. So it might look like something like this. And you can also find out where you want to go. If you translate this to your own organization or your destination will be dependent on the purpose of your company, the market and the circumstances you're in. Maybe your current island will do, maybe not. The hard part is that you are not alone in a company. Everything you see is seen through your own eyes and with your own interpretation. And uh, if you have one second, I will change the presentation because otherwise it will mix up. Um, one second. I have to close this one. Everything is going wrong, of course, now. You may also use your one, uh, the one that you had, uh, so I get that easier. Yeah, I will use that one. Yeah, one second, okay. I will change uh, presentations. Uh, I have to find where it is. And later on, we can switch back to the, the old one. Yeah. So this is the right uh, one. And now we can continue. 
So these are the three uh, uh, organization types, um, uh, archetypes that I, uh, that I mentioned. And um, yeah, maybe you are, you have a combination of characteristics of, uh, of all these uh, islands, uh, some red, some blue, and some green characteristics. And you can find out in the game what these characteristics uh, are. So the hard part is that you are not alone in a company, as I said. So everything you see is seen through your own eyes with your own interpretation. And that can be different for each of you. And it's obvious that you need a common understanding with your colleagues of uh, what you're seeing, what you, what you are seeing, what they are seeing, and what is your interpretation of the facts and what is theirs. And the game facilitates you and your team to get this common uh, understanding. I have to click. Why is this working? I'm sorry. It's gone now or not? It's not in presenting mode. Uh... We can see your PowerPoint not in presenting mode. Uh, yes. Uh, this is, this is it. Yes, now it's in presenting. Yeah. Now it's okay. Is it? I need this one. Yep. So, oh. um, what I said is uh, the common understanding, and um, uh, yeah, that that's obvious because you can see it through a different. You can have a different view than, uh, than other people in your organization. You have your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own values. That's represented by the, the famous iceberg you can see over here. Um, but uh, if you look at, if you take it to an organizational organization level, you can also uh, see that there are different characteristics at the organization level. That is different organization culture, different beliefs, and different uh, values. To, uh, to all people that, uh, that are in your organization. So, and if you are talking about this, you have to find out what this common understanding uh, is. So, if you have a common understanding, then uh, um, uh, let's look at this uh, uh, psychological experiment. And uh, this also shows why there is a common understanding is needed. I bet that some of you are familiar with this uh, psychological experiment and without further thinking loudly screamed uh, that A and B have the same uh, length. But in this case, this is not true. As you can see when I click on this, A is a little bit longer than B. So that's why you always need to talk about what you see, uh, what, your, what your own conclusions uh, are, what your, uh, what your own um, ideas and thoughts uh, are. So that's important uh, to have this conversation all the time. And that's what this game is facilitating. <clears throat> so are you ready? Uh, let's play the game and find out where you are now. How many red, blue, green characteristics do you recognize? So where do you want to go? And why do we want to go that way? And do you want to go to a completely green island or is a red island the best in your case? Or maybe you prefer a mixture for now and you will change your wishes when time is ready. So discuss with each other why, why your thoughts and beliefs and try to find out um, with other people what they see. And together you will determine what your next step uh, can be. So this person is alone in this uh, ships in his ship, um, and he wants to go to this uh, bow and maybe to somewhere the island on the uh, on the horizon, um, with new insights, with new ideas, with new thoughts, and, and uh, an island that fits to the purpose what he needs. Well, Saka, there's a question in the chat uh, on ad hocracy. 
there's always also an answer an ad hoc organization, but maybe you can tell something about uh, what is an ad hocracy. Uh, an ad, ad hoc organization or ad hocracy, um, uh, you will find out what it what it means. You will find out the characteristics of an ad hoc organization. Um, in, in short, what what you often see is that an ad hoc organization is always um, yeah, behind what is happening. They are always reacting on actual what is actual happening. Um, there is a lot of uh, putting out fires, for example. Um, if something is happening in the organization, then uh, we have to react immediately. Uh, and that's different with, uh, for example, a bureaucracy or flexible organization where you have uh, yeah, more discipline, more planning in a bureaucracy, it's more planning or uh, a better workout vision. So that's the difference between these uh, three. But in the in the game, you will discover what what the differences are between these three uh, organization types. Yeah, thank you. And maybe there are more questions. Uh, and then please use the, the conversation pane indeed uh, to. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for now, we uh, uh, we will split up in uh, in separate uh, groups. Uh, and the first thing that you have to do is uh, to categorize 42 organizational uh, characteristics. And you have to do that uh, by uh, answering two questions for all these 42 characteristics. And so you have to do it fast. You have uh, 10 minutes, almost 10 minutes to do it. Um, and you can do it for your own organization. So that's uh, your reference. And your reference is your own organization. If you play this with uh, uh, inside an organization, we have a common understanding of all the people in that organization. And for now, because you are all from different places, take your own organization as a reference and then try to uh, place the, um, uh, the characteristics on this board that you can see. And where do you have to place it? That's uh, by answering two questions. And the first question is, um, do we have this in our organization? Yes or no? So we don't have it or we do have it. That's on the left side. And the other question is, do, we, do you want this in your organization or not? And that's on the top. And if you combine these two questions, that will give four possibilities uh, that you can see on this playing board. So um, if you do have it and you do want it, you have to keep this characteristic. Uh, if you do have it, but you don't want it, then you choose let go. If you don't want it uh, and you don't have it, then you can ignore it. And if you don't have it, but you want it, then you have to choose create. And uh, in the Socrative app, uh, that's a multiple choice and you have these four, for, for every characteristics, you have these four uh, choices. So this uh, first step will take about uh, uh, 10 minutes, work for yourself in silence, work fast, 42 characteristics in 10, in, uh, in 10 minutes, that's 10 to 15 seconds per characteristic, so work very fast. It's uh, your first impression that's important and the discussion will follow in the next, in the following round. Um, and the facilitator of each group will guide you with the next step and the discussion part based on the, based on the results of uh, what you filled in in the Socrative app. So, and after this discussion, as Jeroen said, we will gather again in this main uh, session. Uh, we can share some insights uh, and some learnings and um, Jeroen will discuss then the latest steps uh, we will take on after this uh, meeting. So if you have any questions, uh, you can ask your facilitator or you can ask now, but uh, maybe we can go to the different rooms and, uh, and start playing. We, we went through, uh, 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 through the model, it worked out, we showed how, the, uh, uh, how it could help in facilitating discussions, we had some interesting things there. We also had one, of the, one, one uh, area of improvement, which was make sure you don't have negative questions, because in, you, in the answering them, you get double negatives. Um, uh, uh, so, so that was one. Um, 
and uh, we really picked up, we had, we had um, uh, fortunately we had two people from the same organization, so we could actually facilitate a little bit of discussion where they had different answers. Okay. Um, and and uh, uh, I would like to ask the people who were there, but in general people said, well, this is going to be a nice, uh, 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 this, this is facilitating a good discussion. Uh, uh, we will, perhaps we want to participate in getting more uh, more questions or different questions, and perhaps there could be some uh, some additions to it. So, um, so very positive. Okay, thank you. Um, next on my list, I've got Eric. Eric, do you want to do a quick debrief? You're muted, Eric. This is the it's, it's, well, still okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we had the same uh, discussions about double negatives, uh, to be honest. So that's something to improve, I think. And also about uh, the expectations, like a, a game, is, is it a game or is it real dialogue? So with a lot of uh, number crunching. So we had some discussions about the game itself. We did not have um, few people from the same organization, um, uh, but there were some questions about the game itself. And was, what the interesting discussion we had was about the move, the move from agile to ad hoc. So the current view is more agile, or, and we're getting the want to move to a more ad hoc kind of organizations. So we discussed uh, some uh, small topics like um, the, the quality part and the question from that. Um, uh, but still, we had a lot of well, discussion also about the game itself. So we had some content discussions, uh, but uh, it was really rather, rather limited, to be honest. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ado? Yes, uh, well, we had a very a very good uh, time together. We uh, um, uh, had five people in the room. One uh, already had to leave because uh, she's from Canada, so she had to do the, the work. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there were some uh, questions on the, on the game. Uh, for instance, uh, whether it would be possible to leave out some uh, questions or even to change some questions uh, or maybe even to rephrase some questions because what we saw is that then uh, actually that's not that bad but um, some people uh, had a different opinion on the meaning of the question so you first have to be aware that you answer the real same question so to say so that was one of the things and furthermore in our group uh, we said okay uh, everybody uh, is allowed to say a very short sentence on what uh, he thought the, the game was like. So if anyone of my team um, or players would like to uh, say or ask something, then open your microphone and just uh, say it. Yeah, I think sort of the, some of the questions are a bit ambiguous because of the, the sort of negatives or double negatives. It's, were mentioned beforehand so I think that's a good point. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is whether the game is applicable to different sizes of organizations, whether it's applicable also to, to small organizations, family-run businesses as well as large organizations, whether anybody has a view, whether it's been tried in smaller organizations. No, I can say something about that. Uh, we have played it uh, in uh, the Netherlands uh, at uh, the Dutch uh, railway organization uh, and um, that's that's a quite big organization yeah and we also play it in smaller organizations and it is most effective in if you play it in one team or one unit so if you're one, a smaller group with uh, with with its own culture or its its own environment in your organization then it can be very helpful and of course there can be different cultures inside one organization Especially when you have a, a very big organization, it can be uh, it, it can be quite different. But uh, it can also be help, helpful if you play the game to make that visible. Yes, and, and you can presumably play it at different levels in the organization. So you can you can play it amongst the exec, and then you can play it amongst different different layers, different levels. Have you got any sort of insight as to how that works in practice? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we often play it on different levels, especially when we combine uh, some levels. In uh, So if you have um, a, a team with the manager and uh, a tactical manager or, uh, or a higher level manager, uh, then you can, in, you can get very interesting uh, discussions. Yes. Because they all look at a different way 
uh, how the organization uh, performs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. So that can be very, uh, uh, it, it can be very useful, but it has to be safe for everyone to, to yes. say everything that they need to say. And how, how do so you make it important. safe? And how do you make yeah, it safe? As a, as a facilitator, you have to make it safe, but sometimes that's not possible because some organization, it, there, there is no safety at all. So then as a facilitator, you can do, uh, you, you cannot help them in, in a game in two hours. Yeah. And then you need more than that. Yes, okay, thank you. And um, about the negative questions in the Dutch version of the game, they are already uh, uh, left out. So we, we can translate them in English and then we have also uh, yeah. <laughs> that problem solved. Good. And uh, what uh, Ado said about um, uh, questions that um, you have different interpretations, I think that is exactly what uh, we want to, uh, why, this, why this game is important. Because if something is set in the organization, uh, the picture I showed with, uh, with, the, with the bars on the ground, one set it's, it's three, the other set it's four, uh, we don't have a common understanding about a lot of things we think we have common understanding because of all our beliefs and, and interpretations. So we, we think we're talking about the same, but we are not talking about the same. And that's what this game facilitates that that uh, is discussed. Okay, great. F Fina, so are if you that happens, then I'm glad. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Fina, are you able to do a quick debrief from your group? Yes, of course. Um, we, we took it very uh, realistic and we, we dived into the content, although we were all from different companies, which was a great approach. And uh, it was a very realistic view in the uh, participants' opinion. Long live bureaucracy was the um, <laughs> outcome. And a tip is to read the, the questions very carefully. And like Jan Saak, I also explained there is no right or wrong. For me, the main goal was to open up the discussion and be transparent and being allowed uh, and, and be giving the opportunity to at least talk about it. So I had a wonderful time. And I also had the pleasure to have Jeroen in our room. And Jeroen also said like that he might have some uh, topics to address, but maybe you can also do that later, Jeroen. I'll leave that up to you guys. Yeah. So thanks no. uh, team, team members. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what I, what I saw that was, uh, I was in the same group and uh, what was really nice, we also experienced, and I don't know if other groups also did that, huh? but we had a, a Fina took us in the first look to uh, the overall view. So what's, what's your ambition and what's your current view? Uh, and had a discussion on that because uh, it indicated that we wanted less flexible, less agile organization. So by noting that we, uh, we set it the scene on, on uh, hey, well, is that, does that resemble your, your opinion? Is that right? Hey, did you answer the questions in that way or not? And it led into uh, on what topics do we want to discuss? Uh, and I think it's, it's good because uh, what's already mentioned several times is that there's no right or wrong uh, in the questions. And like an ad hoc organization might be close to an agile organization and the details from the interpretation uh, come from the discussion, uh, but uh, uh, helping the, this context, uh, these insights uh, uh, will help to to uh, to get the, the 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 discussion on the right topics. And uh, uh, from the earlier feedback from from others, uh, from the other facilitators, uh, one tip is is also uh, if you use this in your organization, then um, uh, it it might help uh, because there's there are two ways. Uh, that's also good to express. Uh, hey, you either do it within your organization, and then hey, you can focus on a, on a group or on a management team or uh, whatever, uh, but you have the same context. And what we do today, and that's also what we do in the community, is you can also play this game with everybody having a different context. And especially in the latest one, uh, that's where you can learn from each other. Uh, because in one organization, maybe they are in in the situation others wish, and you can learn from how did you get there. And so the next steps after this, this session uh, and discussing about, well, do you have any ideas how to get there? So 
it was nice to see uh, the discussions uh, coming from the different situations. Thank you. And finally, Rod, can you do a debrief for your group, please? Sure. Um, interesting. We, we also had some challenges with the questions, but we also had some good recall from people how they thought they scored uh, or how they remembered they scored versus how it was reported. So there's a learning point that, that comes out, which I think elements of that have been shared already, which is if you rush and we, we try to hold that 10 minutes, if you rush through the questions, you can inadvertently answer in a way that you wouldn't if you weren't rushing. And so I think there's a learning point here that uh, this is a rich experience, but if one rushes, one could actually add noise into it. So that's one aspect. Uh, the double negatives we, we agree with, um, as to that would be hand if they weren't there. Um, I also think there's a, we believe there might be some question mapping issues going on. So I think it's worth checking that. So I've got our data set and we should just do a double take of that to make sure that there isn't because it's very easy to convince ourselves that the mapping is fine. And it's because at first I thought I'd pasted the work in incorrectly. And then it's like, well, that's probably not likely because it's quite tough to do that given the method we have. So um, there is something about just making sure we're really comfortable between the time we give, the double negative topic and a double take on the mapping. Um, having done that, what we having got caught a little bit by that, what we did do, we spent a lot of time there understanding how the chart can be used to interpret and how it can be used to, um, you know, uncover, which has been shared already, different perspectives and and explore different views. The there was another learning point that popped up, which is um, you can get locked too heavily into some of the categorizations. So that the where we look at the ad hocacy, bureaucracy and agile, um, helpful framework. And like all frameworks, none of them are complete, but they can be very useful. And we then started to use the framework itself to explore what are some people's real experiences, but outside of the scores. So we put the scores to one side and said, OK, in the past 12 months, given the COVID nightmare that many people are living with, um, can we use this framework to express a shift in, in an organizational mindset? And the answer is one of, one of the members of the group absolutely could. They saw their company turn around. It was hard, hard and fast working in one way. And within four weeks, it had already adjusted. And, and the owners uh, realized this is actually a benefit to the organization and have made material changes to the organization within four weeks. By the way, just to state, that says people are not resistant to change. They just need to understand what it is that will help them see change differently. Um, but that was quite fascinating. Four weeks, complete turnaround for the way this organization considers itself. But what enabled that conversation to occur was having access to this particular framework, because one could describe, well, the organization was primarily bureaucratic uh, in terms of mindset and, and archetype. And now it is very much more in the, the uh, agile we also led on to, I know that we don't measure this specifically in the tool, but we, we moved on to the, one of the other sheets where we're showing the hyperflexible as well. And we started to discuss the relationship between what, what might be interesting is if you look at the ad hoc, it might be easier for new entrepreneur ad hoc organizations to actually go into the agile or hyperflexible rather than having to go through the bureaucratic stage. So the, the shift right concept is an interesting approach but it is actually just a concept and so we discussed don't get too wedded to concepts just hold them as lightly as frameworks and then use the information in front of you to frame the dialogue um i think that has the main points team sorry if i missed anything there but uh, that seemed to be the the main takeaways and learning points that's great thank you very much um uh, Joran, can i hand back to you yeah, Jan Sake has, uh, has be, uh, nice to hear this, uh, this feedback from the subgroups, uh, but there are some slides uh, Jan Sake will take and then uh, we'll round up at the end. So maybe Jan Sake, you share your screen again. You're muted. Uh. Definitely the phrase of the year, that one, isn't it? Yeah, in 2020 and in 2021, yeah. So can you see my screen now? Yes. And you can also hear me, so that's okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you for, for all the feedback. Um, very useful, and I'm glad that uh, you had some interesting uh, 
uh, discussions. Um, I don't know, Katie, if you are going to share the slides with uh, with the group. For me, that's okay. Yeah. But uh, yes, if that's okay with you, we will do. Yes. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've one. Uh, the, these are the let's say the the not ideal is maybe the wrong word, but the uh, depending on the purpose, it's the, this can be an ideal uh, island to go to. But what are now what are the characteristics of such an island and um, I have uh, tried to uh, put some words that are related to the different uh, uh, the different organization types in uh, in a word cloud so what you see in ad hoc organization is uh, mostly very reactive there's a lot of improvisation um, uh, putting out fires is uh, what is often happening, informal, short term, all these things comes to an, uh, an ad hoc organization. Uh, a bureaucratic organization is much more command control, uh, a lot of planning, being in control by, uh, by planning, by budgets, uh, a lot of meetings. These are all uh, characteristics of bureaucratic organizations and uh, flexible organizations are more flat. Um, Continuous improvement is very important, uh, but also discipline. And that's uh, what you said, uh, Rod, do you want to go to from ad hoc to true uh, bureaucratic right shifting to a flexible organization? Uh, I don't think you need to do everything, but one of the things that we learn in a, in a bureaucratic organization is discipline. And discipline is very much needed in a flexible organization. Uh, one last note is uh, maybe you have uh, you have noted that I have uh, I sometimes use the word flexible organization and not the word uh, agile organization. And that's on purpose because um, if you implement an agile organization as a flexible organization, uh, then you can be very effective. But what we see in practice is that a lot of organizations try to be agile in a bureaucratic organization, so they don't change their mindset. Uh, they are still a bureaucratic organization and they use the agile terminology, agile words. Uh, but in fact, they, they, do not, uh, no, they do not change in their mindset. So that's one of the things we can also uh, so learn. Is that, that There are a lot of uh, bureaucratic agile organization to make it more difficult. So something to uh, think about. In, uh, in the discussions, uh, I, in, in my uh, introduction, I talked something about uh, uh, the mindset and, and the beliefs. And what you can see in, uh, in this sheet is some of the uh, beliefs that are different in, for example, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in blue, in the uh, bureaucratic organization and the mindset, mindset in the uh, flexible organization. Instead of command control, we think about self-organization. Uh, in a bureaucratic organization, the boss tells what we have to do and makes the decisions. In a, in a flexible organization, is it the uh, yeah, who has um, the knowledge that uh, and is telling what we have to do? It can be the team or someone else. Uh, in uh, uh, in the twenties, nineteen twenties, uh, we there was a. a Separation. Then we started with separation of thinking and acting in uh, in the factories, and in the complex organization nowadays, we see that with high uh, educated professionals, collaboration is uh, much more important. So that's also very different. <clears throat> and on the, on the right side, you see a difference between uh, a complex world we cannot manage, we cannot uh, predict. Uh, uh, instead of the more engineered society, that's much more predictive. Um, another uh, type of leadership in, uh, in a bureaucratic organization, you, you see that there's a managing on results or on behavior of people. Uh, in a, a flexible organization, um, the management is more facilitate, facilitating, is more focused on development of the capabilities of the organization. And that's a different focus. And the last one is about structure, uh, maximum division of labor, small steps, uh, waterfall way of working is in small steps. 
uh, and is, instead of uh, uh, maximum control capacity, so a team has all the control capacity to deliver value instead of the small steps in a bureaucratic organization. So a few examples of um, the other way of thinking and looking at your uh, organization. So, Jeroen, last two slides for you. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so the next steps. Um, so I hope you enjoyed uh, experimenting with the game in this short uh, workshop. Uh, so there are three next steps mentioned on this, uh, this slide. So hopefully uh, you were already inspired by answering the questions, seeing the analysis of the, of the tool in that and, uh, and the discussions uh, that you uh, that you had in these uh, in these uh, two hours. Uh, so hopefully this inspires you to to take some next steps uh, in your organization. And if you want to use the game uh, in there, then uh, then watch the consortium site of the Agile Consortium Netherlands and Agile Business Consortium because uh, facilitated from from those communities. Uh, we will uh, uh, plan more sessions where you can learn to do the game and uh, where you can hear to, uh, to get the, uh, the tools to play the game by yourself. And the most important thing uh, that we say in using this game is that you've played it before so that you know how it works so you get the most out of the game. Uh, so that's, that's mainly the, the, the only prerequisite of using the game. Um, so that's good to know and where to contact us, it's, it's on the bottom. Uh, but besides using it in your own organization, uh, that was already mentioned, there's some negative questions in the English version, uh, but good to know, as I mentioned at the start, uh, but we'll repeat here, is uh, we're thinking of uh, in this COVID times when everything goes virtual, uh, this is, was a nice example of how you can play the game, uh, but we can even uh, go from uh, from this, uh, this Volkswagen version to a Ferrari uh, by creating an app. So that's something that we would like to, uh, to work towards. And if you uh, uh, think it's, it's, it's nice to join, if you get motivated on this, uh, then please let us know. And one other example is that in the Netherlands, we already started a work group uh, and that needs some revival, but uh, that looked at the next steps. So if you play this game, uh, then by creating an extra set of cards as an enhancement to this game. Uh, you can take a next step in if you've chosen on uh, with which things you didn't have and you won't have or what you have and you want, what you want to get rid of, uh, what interventions can you do to take action upon that? And uh, uh, looking at the iceberg that, uh, that Jan Sake showed, uh, also go into depth uh, under the water to the values. So what are the values behind this? Uh, and how do you get a discussion on that with, with the management team? So there are lots of possibilities to create enhancements of, of this game. And well, if you would like to join and or have ideas, then please also let us know. Uh, with uh, tools like Zoom, etc., it's easier to get an international work group uh, yeah, more than before. So we would like you to, uh, to uh, come forward, step forward and, uh, and help us in bringing all those communities together and delivering nice results. So that's about uh, this part. And then the, the final slide is a look forward to the collaboration of Agile Consortium and uh, Agile Business Consortium. So maybe you can show the next slide. It's okay. If it's in there, yeah. So that's on the 25th of February. Every day there are sessions, but especially I want to uh, take this one out since that's uh, also one that we uh, do jointly. And that's about, uh, it's, it's about agile portfolio management, connecting strategy to operation, uh, but also includes an executive manifesto with uh, the, the change in behavior you, you need uh, on an executive uh, level. So uh, closely related to what we have uh, today. So just wanted to bring that under your attention. And uh, then I would like to hand it over to Katie to, to wrap it up uh, and maybe check uh, uh, some opinions from, uh, from the audience. Okay, thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, I think, first of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our facilitators who have given of their time today and brought their huge experience uh, to, to help us go through this. So thank you very much, uh, facilitators, uh, for your time uh, and your expertise. Um, thank you also to the uh, consortium, to um, both Jan Sacker and Euron for helping us with this. Um, I would say, uh, as uh, Euron has said, that there's lots going on as the Agile 20 Reflect Festival. The, the Agile Business Consortium is doing stuff basically during Tuesdays and Thursdays during February. So have a look at, at those. And thank you very much for attending. Are there any sort of questions people would like to, to put before we finish? So there is a, a question just popped up in um, the chat is around right shift. Um, is it a new agile concept? Not heard of it before. Um, I, I think not new. I think it was about 2005, wasn't it? That, that Bob Marshall came up with that and his model is based on a lot of sound uh, theoretical models, um, which he took and turned into a, a sort of practical way of working. I don't know, young Sakur, if uh, you've got any thoughts on that? Uh, the first time I uh, heard uh, Bob Marshall speak was in the conference in uh, uh, Antwerp in, in, uh, in Belgium. I think it was 2006 or 2007, something. So it's not new anymore. <laughs> No, <laughs> absolutely. And I see Peter's just put the two email addresses of the consortium in the chat there. So thank you for that. Any final questions from our audience? Um, how do we get hold of the game so that my business can use it? Yeah, so uh, the game is something... Uh, so if you're in here, just watch head the consortium, the links to the consortium. We will make sure that we uh, got information there on, on how you can uh, use this. But typically what we do is uh, do something like we did today, but a little more extensive so that you are able to facilitate on your own. So train the train and then provide you with the, uh, with the tools to do this in your own organization. But if you're interested, then just uh, uh, mail and we'll make sure you're included in the next steps we'll, uh, we'll uh, plan. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, everybody. That's, that's it from us. Thank you.